Joshua. In today's video, we are going to ask this question. Did anything exist prior to the emergence of King Emperor Shashanka? Shashanka. And this is a common perception that Bengali history begins with Shashanka. Many people assume that our history only starts in 6th century. And in this video, we shall see that this is not the case. And our civilization is in fact much older. And so we shall discuss about those quasi-historical figures, semi-mythical figures, and we shall directly come to historically documented figures who existed prior to Emperor Shaoshanko. We shall begin with Sage Kapila. We see that in Gita, Sri Krishna is saying among the sages and Kapila. Gita is very deeply influenced by Sankhya. There is in fact a chapter in Gita which is called Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya exerted a deep influence on Buddhist philosophy. Gautam Buddha was born in the city called Kapila Vastu which is named after Sage Kapila. At that point of time, such was the influence of Kapila that cities were named after him. Two gurus of Gautam Buddha, Ararkalama and Udraka, were followers of Sankhya. And how old is Sankhya? I mean, if this question is asked, and uh, it's not easy to answer. Some philosophers have considered Sankhya to be the oldest school of philosophy, perhaps older than Rig Veda. Many historians and archaeologists have connected between Sankhya's Prakriti and the mother goddess worship which existed in the mature Harappan civilization. Sankhya is definitely a very old philosophy. It is said that Kapila expostulated the philosophy of Sankhya in the confluence of Ganga and Sagara. So if we consider Bengalis today as worshippers of Durga Kali Jagadhatri, which are concrete embodiments of the abstract notion of Sankhya's Prakriti and Adi Sankhya is very old. This is a scholarly consensus that Sankhya uh, existed much uh, earlier and the current form is only a much later day interpolation. And so uh, we can safely assume that Sankhya probably existed before the Mahabharata war and Sankhya can be as old as the Rig Veda. So the time frame would be somewhere from the mature Harappan civilization, you know, the time of Panduraja to be so 4000 years old, that would be a kind of a safe time frame and this quasi mythical figure. And in this connection, we can remember that voiceover from Lord of the Rings. History becomes myth, myth becomes legend. Kapila is a legend, but there is a historical core to that legend. The second landmark we shall talk about would be the king Pandraka Vasudeva. Again, we go to the time frame of Mahabharata war and we see that here was a rival of Vishnu Vasudeva who challenged Vishnu Vasudeva and Vasudeva was probably the title of the leader of the cult. Uh, that Tantra based system of Vaishnavism which uh, Pandraka Vasudeva wanted to lead and therefore the rivalry broke out. Now Pundra is very old. We have mentions of Pundra and definitely Pundra is as old, at least as old as the Mahabharata war. In fact, Anga, Vanga, Kalinga, Pundra, Sumha, we have mentions of these lands. We also have that very uh, famous uh, shloka which uh, speaks about Banga, Bhagadhas, Cherapada and their language to resemble that of a bard and which has been uh, interpreted by historian Atul Shur as indicative of the worship of bard and from Panduraja DB we indeed find archaeological remains of the worship of the bard mother goddess. We have reasons to believe that the bard mother goddess is connected to goddess Kali. I have two Bengali articles to this effect. Makali Uthan, Makali Uthsharan and I'll attach the links in the description box for those who can read Bengali. And we know that around the same time King Jarasandha of Magadha, who was in fact a friend of Pandraka Vasudeva, he was a worshipper of Kali. Jarasandha's very name can be indicative of Tantra, the two sides, the two sides and a perfect equilibrium. And uh, the gory death of Jarasandha can actually be indicative of the violent upheaval 
that unseated tantra as the state religion in these parts of india and so uh, it is uh, not a matter of idle conjecture but we know for sure that jarasandha's kali is still worshipped in the district of birbhum and uh, she is called guhya kali and we can understand why after uh, that kind of upheaval tantra had to recede to the underground and so we have a kali who was the public goddess turning into the secret kali guhya kali gujya kali as we call it in bengali and so pondrak vasudeva would be our second landmark and panduraja dhib which shows that bad mother goddess was worshiped the uh, is a strong contender because we know that vishnu vasudeva burnt down the capital of pondrak vasudeva and indeed poreshandra dasgupta's excavation report says that around 3000 years ago panduraja dhib was burnt down and it was probably an attack from the outside because prior to that fire attack panduraja dhib was a chalcolithic civilization it reveals copper instruments but after the fire attack when the civilization was being rebuilt it shows the evidence of iron instruments so iron age starts in panduraja dhib we know that machiravartan civilization was in fact a copper age civilization and it was later on replaced Uh, by uh, the vedic uh, people who uh, used iron instruments ayas is mentioned in the vedas which is you know the uh, krishna ayas which is iron and uh, in harappan civilization they used copper instruments and panduraja dhib also used copper instruments the third landmark that we find in our ancient period would be vijay singha again another quasi mythical but this time historical because of course we know that such a figure existed in buddhist chronicles it is said that he stepped uh, on the island kingdom of lanka on that very day when gautam buddha breathed his last and vijay singha went to lanka from eastern part of india from the soma kingdom and uh, the rar area and the modern day hubli district has got this place called singur which was singapore we have certain concrete reasons to believe which was the capital of vijay singha and uh, many uh, documentations exist to this effect which prove that the language which was transmitted to lanka and the modern silonese is a direct descendant of that language and that language was eastern indic language it was in fact an outer aryan language and uh, it was in fact a precursor of modern day bengali language and that's why even now bengali language and singhala language they share many commonalities and also the fact that there are genetic uh, connections between uh, the the singhalese people and the bengali people and some genetic studies have been conducted to that effect we have certain reasons to believe that vijay singha was probably from the first flourish of gangari dai civilization which will later emerge here and will be chronicled by greek and roman historians the fourth important historical landmark the historical figure and here we are actually talking in terms of figures because it is easier for us to identify and connect with history when we in fact talk about individual human figures so mahapadmananda cartius says that mahapadmananda was a gangari dai prince who later on becomes the emperor of magadha and so we have certain reasons to believe that gangari dai empire was identifiable with the nanda empire which is the very first historical all india empire the flourish of gangari dai civilization is a testimony that Mahapadmananda and uh, this uh, Gangari Dai civilization can be in fact very closely linked. We have seen how exactly the Nanda Empire is ostracized in mainstream Indian narratives, and in fact, Gangari Dai has been like totally censored. And the very popular mother goddesses who uh, have been uh, excavated from Chandrakirtigar or other regions of Bengal have not been discussed. in any mainstream indian texts and this is a censorship and this mother goddess worship we can understand that it was very heavily censored in mainstream indian accounts after mahapadmananda the gupta empire the founder of the gupta empire shri gupta he 
came from modern day Malda Mushidabad district uh, that area and Mrigasthapan Stup that was the place where he hailed from this foundation of the Gupta Empire would be somewhere around 300 AD that would be 300 common era AD or CE whatever we call it and then the king about whom we have recorded evidence is Chandra Burman. He is in fact the first king about whom we have stone evidence as it is called in Bengali Pathure Praman. We have a stone inscription of uh, King Chandra Burma and many people identify King Chandra Burma with uh, the king who is mentioned in the famous iron pillar that we find in Kutub Manar complex and so King Chandra Burma who ruled from modern day Bapura district uh, Pushkaran is the, uh, the seat of his capital and Chandra Burma was considered to be a powerful king and he was a Vaishnavite and we can see that from 4th century 5th and 5th century AD the epicenter of Vaishnavism shifts from Mathura to Bengal and Krishna worship or this particular form of Tantric Vaishnavism it is fully flourished in Bengal in the coming centuries we will come to that later and of course uh, the emergence of the idea of Radha Gupta Empire continued for some time and we have a mention of King Bainya Gupta and somewhere around uh, 507 AD we have mentions of him we have documentation of his rule and uh, so he existed here around the same period we have Gopachandra the Chandra dynasty again I mean and the Kharga dynasty these Chandra dynasties and Kharga dynasties and the Natha dynasty these dynasties all precede the regime of King Emperor Shoshanko and furthermore we have King Jayanaga Joyna whom some historians have placed in the period of Matsyanya but I have certain reasons to believe and I have written uh, an article and you will get uh, the link of it I mean if you can read Bengali that article is written in Bengali that King Joyanag in fact preceded King Shoshanko and King Joyanag was actually ruling during the period when Gora was emerging for the first time as an imperial power and so Joyanag's time would be somewhere around 550 AD during the same period like roughly from 400 uh, AD to 500 uh, or 550 AD we have the emergence of the great grammarian Chandra Gomin from Chandra Gomin's name we have Chandra Deep modern day Borishal district and Chandra Gomin was an internationally renowned Buddhist grammarian and his treatises on grammar very widely circulated and he was uh, well renowned as a scholar and he is again a pre Shoshanko figure. In today's discussion, we have seen that from 2000 BC to 550 AD, we have a number of illustrious Bengalis who preceded the emergence of King Emperor Shoshanko. For more details about them, you can check out my Facebook page and I will bring out videos dedicated to each one of these illustrious sons of the soil of the ancient Bengali nation. Please like, subscribe and share this channel. Thank you.